Worship the Lord in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just 
feel a great release tonight. I don't know who it is that wants God in a special way. Give glory to God. Praise the Lord. But I'd like us to go to the book of Joshua 14 verse 8. Praise Jesus. The book of Joshua 14 verse 8. Can we start from verse uh, maybe say 5 just to get a backing up of... Yes, the Bible says, As the Lord commanded Moses... So the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Are we together? Can we read together if you don't mind? As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Praise the Lord. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephne, the Kenazite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man concerning me and thee in where? In Kadesh Barnea. Mm -hmm. Forty years old was then Moses was the servant of the Lord. Sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought unto him word again as, as it was in mine heart. As it was where? I want you to get that. If you have a Bible, underline that. Uh, let's go to verse, verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed my God. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. That's the second time it's being repeated. Praise the Lord. Verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. I don't hear you reading with me. Let's read together. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he has said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake the word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day, four score and five years. That's 85, yeah? Verse 11, yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war both to go out. Are we together? That is an 85 year old man speaking. He's saying when I was 40 years, the very strength I had, it is the one I have right now. Praise the Lord. It means we have taken a life beyond life expectancies of this world. Praise the Lord. At 85, a man is preparing to go for battle. 85 years. He's saying, as my strength was that day, so it is now. Not just for war. It is now both to go in and to come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Verse 12. It says, now therefore... Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou hardest in that day how the Anakins were there, and that the cities were great and faint. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Praise the Lord. And Joshua blessed him. Praise the Lord. And gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephne, Hebron for an inheritance. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's go back to verse 8. I want to show you something there. Verse 8 says, Nevertheless, brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this one is Caleb talking. Praise the Lord. This is Caleb talking to Joshua. He's trying to give a background of what had happened some time ago. They had been sent by Moses by the order of God to go and spy the land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. They had been sent. They selected tribes from the, from, from the Israelites and they were sent to go and spy the land that God had told them that they will take upon. Praise the Lord. 
But when they did, they went there. Moses even told them that go and spy how these people live. Check, do they have towns? Do they have buildings? I want you to go and check out their lives. Then come back and give us a report. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, come back and give us a report. Hallelujah. So they go to that land. They went, 12 of them. Joshua accompanied them, and there was also Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Praise the Lord. So they went there. They saw, they found giants. They were called the Anakims. Those ones, uh, for those ones who have been attending school of ministry, the Nephilims. The Anakims were there. They were giants. They were very huge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were very big, 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 big people. And then when these people saw them, they came back to give the report. They said, we have gone there. We have even brought the fruit. But, but, there are people there who are huge. They are giants. They are big. And we appear to them as locusts. Praise the Lord. This is someone reporting, giving a report. Praise Jesus. As he was there giving this report, Caleb intercepts and says, no way. They might be as big because that report brought a certain fear to people. The people started fearing and said, you, you Moses, take us back to our land. It was better that we died there than going to be killed by those people. Praise the Lord. And when you read it in the account of Numbers 13 and Numbers 14, yes, that, there it is. It says, and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. This is another man reporting on behalf of God. Praise the Lord. Then Caleb came and said, no way. They might be as big as they are, but they are just but bread unto us. This is our bread. Praise the Lord. This was a certain spirit reporting about what they saw. Another person is reporting that they saw something that scared them so much and they were going to die. And another person is saying, no, 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 no. There is nothing there that can kill us. If God said that we were going to take that land, we are going to take it. Because God said so. Praise the Lord. I want us to go back to Numbers. Let's, let's read Numbers from about 13, uh, from about verse 10. Uh-huh. Let's, 11. Uh-uh. Um, go down, go down to about verse 15. Yes, the Bible says, and these are the names of the men which Moses went, sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of who? Yes, then let's continue 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Go ye up this way southward and go, yes, and see the land what it is. Can we go to about verse 20? Um, yes, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether it be wood, they are in or not, and be ye good of be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the what? First ripe grapes. Let's continue. So they went and searched the land from wilderness of Zin to Reb, to Rehob, and uh, as men come to Hamad. Yes, as they ascended by the south. Let, let's continue. Let's go to twenty three. I want you to go home and read that story by yourself. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Bible says, and they came unto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch, a branch which was the cluster of grapes, and they bare in between two upon a staff, and they brought out of the pomegranates and of the figs. Don't worry, pomegranates. <laughs> the place was called the brook of what? Eshkol, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. There's something I'm looking for. And they turned from searching the land after 40 days. Uh -huh. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron. Yes, that's what I've been looking for. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse 27. And they told him, and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely, 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 it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Do you see that kind of confusion? Uh -huh. And they told him, nevertheless, the people be strong. 
I know God told me that I am more than, more than a conqueror. But nevertheless, I feel weak. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in that land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Verse 29. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. I want to finish this. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. Uh -huh. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying that the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up inhabitants thereof. And the people that we saw in it are the men of great stature. Praise the Lord. They are trying to report what they saw. And what they saw is that they saw great men that they cannot defeat. That is what they saw. But to the eyes of God, God calls it an evil report. Evil report. He says, yes. Yes, you went to that land. Yes, you saw them. You saw what they were doing. Yes, you saw how big they were. Yes, you saw that they can consume you. Yes, you saw, you saw yourselves as grasshopper. But that is an evil report. Praise the Lord. This one now narrows down evil, evil speaking to something else. Let me show you something in the book of Psalms 34 verse 15 around there. Psalm 34. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Yeah? The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut them off from the remembrance of, remembrance of the earth. Uh -huh. The righteous cry and the Lord hears. I'm looking for something which says that if you want to see good, keep your mouth off evil. It's either 34 verse 7 or 34 verse 17. Praise the Lord. Come on. Let me get it. Oh, Jesus, help me. Yes. The Bible says, What is the man that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? What should he do? Keep thy tongue from evil. And thy lips from speaking guile. Now, keeping your tongue from evil is not just keeping your tongue from gossiping, from saying things that so-and-so said, from saying bad things about someone, but you saw something and you're reporting it in another way. Keep your tongue from speaking evil. Evil has been defined there for you. You went and the doctor said, you have cancer. You came back to your parents and said, they have said that I have cancer. Evil report. Praise the Lord. You went and stood somewhere and someone was busy taking away your land and you went to report to the police and say, police, police, they are taking my land. Evil report. They cannot take what belongs to you. Whatsoever belongs to you has been kept by the power of God. Praise the Lord. You go somewhere, you hear people talking evil about you. Then you go and report of the evil they were talking about you. Evil reporting. And for that reason, the wrath of God burns against the Israelites. God told them you will not see of the land because of the manner of your reporting. Praise the Lord. Now this one tells us something else. We know the Bible says that we have been made kings and what? And priests unto God. You are a priest, you are a priest and a king because of what you report unto God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that the, the righteous, they do what? They walk by faith. The just shall walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The Bible says that the just shall walk by faith. Faith is not in the carnal senses. Faith is not in the natural realm. The Bible says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The meaning there in the Greek, the Greek meaning there of walking, it means to make progress, to make best out of opportunities. 
We make best out of opportunities by faith. Praise the Lord. Not by sight. Because what is in the sight, what is in the sun is the external influences of this world. You see, and because you saw the way you saw, you report it. That is not the walking of a righteous person. If you be that you are born of God, your walk is a walk of faith. Why? Because unbelief introduces you to a place of staggering. You are unstable in your ways. You do not have direction. Why? Because of unbelief. You don't know what to report. You don't know what to believe. You are not stable in your ways. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You notice that in the Bible, even God progresses. Our walk is a walk of progression. There is nothing static about us. That's why the Bible says, we walk. We walk. If you are in the faith, you move forward. Regardless of what you see, regardless of what you hear by your ears, you press on forward because you know what God said in you. Praise the Lord. Now, that is what Caleb defines as following the Lord. He said, I, but I followed the Lord. I followed the Lord. Why did Caleb say he followed the Lord? He said he followed the Lord because when he saw of those guys, in his heart there was something that was convinced. That I know the word of God. I know that God said that we are going to take of them. And if you said it, I believe it. This is my faith. The Bible says, nevertheless, my brethren that went up, we made the heart of the people melt, evil report, but I wholly followed my Lord. That is the definition of following the Lord. I knew what to report in the presence of anyone I was meant to report. I only followed the Lord. I gave my life to God. Following the Lord is not these things we used to have in our mind. That the Lord is walking and you're following behind. You are poor, you are devastated, you are confused, but you're following. No, 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 no. Look at what the man of God says was following the Lord. The kind of manner of speech that comes out of you, regardless of the circumstance. Not only the speech, but what you see. They saw giants, Anak, which they couldn't defeat. Caleb saw opportunity. When you continue on that scripture, he says, but they were but bread unto us. When men were seeing things that were going to crush them, Caleb was observing an opportunity. He was saying, look at this giant. He's too big. I can't miss him. If I'm meant to bring him down, he has already covered the geographical area I'm supposed to deal with. You look at that scripture, it says, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. When you start to report like that, you have been separated from this world. Praise the Lord. But when you see something and you're saying, oh, this will finish me. Oh, this will finish me. Whose child are you? Praise the Lord. David, when he was looking at Goliath, he was not standing there complaining. Goliath, by the definition of the Bible, he was of sorts a Nephilim himself. Praise the Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17, 45 and you see. You see which kind of reporting he gave. It says, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He, for he was but a youth and ruddy and, and a fair countenance. Uh -huh. And the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog that thou comest unto me with staves? And the Philistine cast David by his gods. Mm -hmm. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the land. And David said to the Philistine, oh boy, oh God. Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Are you seeing the man of reporting? Let's continue. Verse 46. 
He says, this day will the Lord deliver thee. Hey, hey, Jesus. The guy is beholding the Nephilim, the huge guy, and he's telling him, this day the Lord will deliver you. You can imagine if he was the grasshopper. He's saying, this day the Lord will deliver you in my hand, and I will smite you, and I will take thy hand from thee, and I will, give, I will take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and unto the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Praise the Lord. But this God now dwells in the inside of you. He walks in you. He moves in you. He does everything he wants to do in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. God gave us a report. And that is what we utter out. Praise the Lord. That is what we utter out regardless of the circumstances that we see. Because the Bible says that we have been begat of the word of truth. Praise the Lord. If you are born of the word of truth, speaking the word is your nature. It is not a struggle. Praise the Lord. The word of God in your mouth is God talking. It is God himself talking. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to show you something. Yes, of his own will we begat us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, these are two different people that have learned to report differently. These other sons, they did not follow the Lord if there is a description of following the Lord. When you look at the men that followed the, followed the Lord in that dispensation, actually the Bible says that Joseph and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb were of a different spirit. Different spirit. Why were they accorded the different spirit? They knew what to report and how to report it. They reported according to what they saw. Why? Because when God said, it entered their heart. Caleb is busy saying, I reported, but from the depths of my heart. Yes, I am seeing the situations are turning upside down, but there is something in the depth of my heart which must cause my mouth to speak. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says, and you shall say to this mountain, you shall say to this mountain, if you believe in your heart, if it truly entered in your heart, you shall say to this mountain, not you shall cry to this mountain. Not you shall tell your neighbor about the mountain. Not you shall discuss with the doctor about the mountain. He said, you shall say. Why? Because God knows you that out of your abundance, your mouth must speak. And what is your abundance? The word of God. The word of God is your abundance. Praise the Lord. So, most of the moments we are presented with situations, we know what to speak. Praise the Lord. Did God promise you anything? Did he promise you anything? Did he tell you anything in his word? Do you know who you are in the word of God? Do you know where you stand? Praise the Lord. If you do, you have to get stubborn about it. You have to get stubborn about it regardless of what is presented before you. Praise the Lord. I want to show you, oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to show you a certain scripture in Genesis 28, verse 15. Genesis 28, verse 15. Hey, hey. This was God talking to Jacob. And he said, and behold, let's read together. And behold, I am with thee. And I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And I will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave you. Until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. God says, I have, I cannot leave you. If I said you are more than a conqueror, you are, you are more than a conqueror. If I said you are blessed and you are lending to nations, you are blessed and you are lending to nations. God will never be done with you until he has fulfilled. He said it. Let's look. Let's look at the amplified version of the same. Oh God. He says, and behold, I am with you and will keep watch over you with care. I am with you. These Israelites just didn't know that God was with them. Praise the Lord. 
He says, and behold, I am with you. Eh? And keep watch over you with care. Take notice of you. He takes notice of you. God takes notice of you. You, I take notice of you wherever you may go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done all of which I have told you. What did God tell you? We are not giving in to the reports of men. We are not giving in to the reports of doctors. We are not giving in to the reports of mere people. Why? The Bible says he will not give you up until he has done what he told you. Did he say you will lend to nations? He says I won't leave you until you have lent to nations. Did he say you are the head and the tail? I won't leave you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, there is a certain verse I wanted to show us in the book of Hebrews 10.38. 10.38. The Bible says, now the just shall do what? But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This is the reason as to why the children of Israel, they die in the wilderness. God said, now from 20 years below, all of you are going to die. You will not see of that land, 20 years and above. You will not see of that land because of evil reporting. Evil reporting. One word that comes out of your mouth can send a whole generation into a quagmire. One word. Yet another word that comes out of your mouth can set a whole generation on fire. That is why we know how to speak. We know what to say when situations rise against us. Even when they are not rising, we stay talking. We stay speaking it. Why? Because in us there is something that is so stubborn. Because we know what our hearts have grasped. Praise the Lord. We are not as they of the world. We are not carnal. He said we do not walk by sight. Walking by sight is the state of carnality. Where if I felt a back pain, I say, oh, back pain. I think I'm going to have which, which disease of the back? I, I, by the way, I don't know diseases. If they, felt, if they felt anything, they say, now this is because of this. Now this is because of this. Now, because they are so much in the sensual realm, they have not exercised their senses to discern what is evil and what is good. They have not. And how do we exercise our senses? By the word. We stay in the word. We fellowship in the word. We feed in the word. And that which God spoke about us, we don't let go. Tell your neighbor, I don't let go. If God said it, he said, I will not leave you. I have no plan of leaving you. If you are carrying my word, I have no plan of leaving you until it is fulfilled. Praise the Lord. We now know by the teachings that we have been having here that we are God carriers. We carry God in the inside of us. We carry the life of God in the inside of us. What we do when we talk, we dispense God in every place. Praise the Lord. We are God dispensers. We cannot die as weak as they. Praise the Lord. The Bible says you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. God dwells in the inside of you. And he's causing you to triumph in every place. Every place. In every place you go, there is something there called triumph waiting for you. In every circumstance and situation you find yourself, there is something there called triumph waiting for you. But how are you reporting? Praise the Lord. Sincerely speaking, if you are carnal, if you're of this world, you will say God was very unfair. Why did he kill the people for saying the truth? Why did he disturb these ones? They said the truth. The truth was they were, they were giants. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But faith does not walk by sight. What did God say? God said you will take the land. Whether there is a giant, whether there is what, whether there is what, you ride in that confidence that the land is mine. Praise the Lord. We don't debate about it. 
God said you are the head or you God said you are the head and not the tail. You don't debate about it. That is the word of God. It is final. Which report do you carry? You which report? Praise the Lord. They are those ones who close themselves in the in their closets. They say, Father, I thank you. Mashakalaka. Lakalaka sakata. Hey, I am, I, I, I am more than a conqueror. The greater one lives inside of me. Then immediately they walk out. They are shaken. Why? Because whatsoever they are decreeing is not in the, it's not written in their heart. It is not a substance of abundance. So they can easily report something else from what they are saying. That is why we have positive praying and speaking Christians in the closets and negative speakers outside. You are there, you are encouraging yourself. I am rich. I am deep. Hey, glory to God. I have made it. I have made it. I have Immediately you step out and something presents you like, ah. Let me call my uncle from the United States. I need some money. But you just said you're rich. But you just say that you are more than a conqueror. But you just say that Christ dwells in the inside of you. You said it. But immediately you walked out and saw with your two eyes like this. You were shaken. Say, I am not of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Bible says we are not of them that draw back unto perdition. We are not of them. Meaning their God has already created a distinction for who you are. He said you are not of them. But we are not of them who draw back to perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. They believe. Praise the Lord. Pr praise the Lord. When you believe, your mouth will speak. For we have believed and thus we speak. But you will speak to the content of what you have believed. You will report to the content of what you have believed. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that you see with your naked eyes that is permanent. You're saying, no, this situation has been here for two years, five years, ten years. It will go. There is nothing that the devil can create that is permanent. Why? Because the essence of eternity is hatched in the word. The word that lives and abides forever. Not sentiments. Praise the Lord. I want to show you a certain scripture in Psalms 37. I love it. It's like my favorite. Psalm 37 around 15. Mm -hmm. Let's go down. Yeah. Let's go to about uh, 30. I want the place which says, uh -huh. yes, uh, the mouth of the righteous speaketh what? And his tongue talketh what? 31. The law of God, the law of his God is in. And none of his steps shall slide. <laughs> the wicked watches the righteous and seeth to slay him. Uh -huh. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Yes. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see. Uh-huh. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. I have seen the wicked in great power. I believe this was the report of those Israelites. They saw the wicked men in great power. They have told you of a certain difficult situation in your life. You have seen it in its great power and it is spreading himself like a green bay tree. Verse 36. David says, yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. I sought him, but I could, it could not be found. He could not be found. A green bay tree is a big tree that has depths of roots that cannot be plucked out. But even that one disappears. The psalmist says, I saw the wicked one. He had spread himself. He had come in mighty power. He had come to take me away. He had come to strangle me. He had come to eat me alive. He had come to establish a certain situation in my life that seemingly is permanent. But he said, I passed. And lo, he was no more. No more. 
What was that meaning? It means there is nothing that the wicked one can establish that is permanent. There is nothing. Think about it. All permanence and levels of permanence are established by the word of God. You are there in that situation for long. You're saying, I have tarried here long. Maybe, maybe, and maybe it's just because of ignorance. But not because it is permanent. David says, let's go. Let's go to verse 37. He says, but mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. The Bible says, the Bible says, mark him. Mark him. Mark him. Mark who is the perfect man in this place. The Bible says, mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. Why? Because those things we claim that we see and seem to threaten us, it is how you see them. Those things that you hear and they think they create a certain fear in you, it's how you heard them. The Bible says, take heed what you hear. Take heed. Take heed what you hear. It's in Mark 4. Take heed what you hear. These children had the report of one man and they turned God's wrath against them. One man, one man just came and said, Banak, whatsoever is there, we cannot make it, you will not handle. That is why I told you time and again, I don't keep anyone negative near me. If I notice you're always like, oh, this one, oh, no, we can't do it. We can't do it. No, we can't. Because me, every time you say, we cannot do it, it is too big. You, you, you're, you're literally telling me, you're literally making my heart to question. I'm like, no, but why can't we do it? We can do it. Why can't we do it? We can do it. Keep off negative people. One evil report costed a whole generation. They were all killed by God. Why? Because someone came and said, but we went and saw. But the Bible says of someone, Caleb, that he wholly followed the Lord. He knew what to report. He knew what to say. That is what they call wholly following the Lord. Wholly given to God. You can do many things. You can give your body to be burnt. You can do many things as charity work. You can do many things for people. But if you do not know how to wholly follow the Lord, there is an end to that man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to show you a certain scripture in the book of James. James 1. Let's go to verse 17. Hallelujah. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Verse 18. Of his own will begot he us of the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Yes. Verse 19. For the wrath of man worketh not what? The righteousness of God. Verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of the naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Uh -huh. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Do you hear? Do you see that? Take heed what you hear. He says, don't just be hearers only, deceiving yourself. Verse 23. He says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And then, for he beholdeth himself and goeth away and straight away forgetteth what manner he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. God spoke to you. God said something about you. Continuing therein, he says, you shall be blessed in your deed. 
Because most of the times when we hear the word, we get excited about it, yet not giving it an opportunity to dwell in the inside of us. If it doesn't touch your heart, if it doesn't enter your heart and mix with faith inside your heart, there is a possibility your reporting will be different. You will say, eh, but, but Apostle Grace preached this thing. But anyway, you are ever oscillating. You are unstable. You are in that place of where you can easily say this that is so positive, then you can easily say this that is so negative. The Bible says that kind of man should not expect anything from God. Don't expect anything. At the end of the day, these people stand and they want to stone Caleb. Why did they want to stone Caleb? Because Caleb gave of the correct report, which they were not willing to believe because it had not entered their heart. And at wanting to stone him, God shows up and his anger burns against them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This truth that begat you is what we speak and matter every day, in every situation, in every circumstance, and we don't let go. We don't. We stay on it, we meditate on it, we feed on it, we talk on it, we do everything on it. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Pastor Zach was teaching us uh, in the MOOC manifest, and he told us some people are just lazy. They are just lazy to keep speaking the word because they, they don't see it. But the place where we are as children of God is not governed by human sight. It is not governed by human sight. When you start to see this place, you will start to walk. When you start to see it, you will start to walk there. My father, Apostle Grace, usually says, there where you have seen, that place where you have imagined and meditated, it is just a matter of time, your body will go there. The best way and the sure way to know that whatsoever thing it is that you have grabbed it by your heart is what you utter out of your mouth. When it pops out and you hear, you're like, hey, that is what tells you that indeed it has formed itself in the inside of you. That's why now Paul tells Timothy in the book of 1 Timothy 4.15 that give thyself wholly unto this thing. Meditate and give thyself wholly. Wholly. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Praise the Lord. Meditate on it. I want to show you a certain scripture in the book of Proverbs 4. Meditate on it. Proverbs so from about, about verse 20. It says, my, heart, my son, attend to my... Attend. What does it mean to attend? To give a special recognition and attention to it. He says, my son, attend to my words and incline thy ear unto my sayings. Verse 21. It says, let them not depart from your eyes. Do you see what Caleb and Joshua were seeing? They were seeing the word. It never departed in their eyes. So even if you, you, you presented Anakites, giants, they couldn't see them for who they were. The word of God had not departed from their eyes. He says, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Keep them there. Praise the Lord. It says, for they are life unto those that find them. And health to their flesh. Life to those that find them. This introduces us to a place where we know we don't only seek God in prayer. But we also seek God in the word. When you're there, you're sitting reading your Bible and you're speaking in tongues. You are seeking of God. He says when you find, they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It means, my father once said, that it shall reach a point and there shall be no need of healing. Why? The more the word of God increases, the more the word of God grows, the more the word of God takes his cords, it's becoming life in you. It's becoming health to your flesh. What can kill what has become the word of God? Nothing. Praise the Lord. Verse 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We are back there again, to the place of the heart. 
Caleb reported and said, but these things, I kept them in my heart that I may not keep the people to melt. He knew if I can keep them in my heart, I will give a certain report that will preserve my generation. And this other one didn't know. He just said, he said, but, but, but let, let's speak the truth. Let's speak the truth sincerely. But what is truth? What is truth? What is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. Jesus presented himself as the reality. There is nothing more real than Jesus. If he fills your heart, you will speak him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go back. Let's go back to Proverbs. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Check around your life. What issues are there? What issues? What issues are surrounding you? What issues? They are all dependent on what is in your heart. That is why when we, re we read the last devotion, we said something so powerful. We said, we are not they that react to situations, but respond to situations. Why? Because we carry the abundance of the word in the inside of us. We know what to report. We know what to report. Even God himself knows what to report. That is why the Bible says that when he sees your enemies playing and juggling with you, the Bible says he laughs. He's reporting. That is a form of reporting. He's laughing. They are busy doing things on you, but he's like, no, you cannot touch my anointed one. So he starts to laugh. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Child of God is just a matter of time. But it is all dependent on what you report. What has filled you will cause you to report. When you are around negative people and they keep saying, Banange, we can never make it. Banange, Uganda has problems. Now people are fighting. Now people want this. Now, now, now Uganda has corruption. Now, that is faith that is being reported to you. That is a form of reporting. Evil reports. But an evil report has a way to wait. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody open your mouth right now and just speak a report of God about your life. Hey. Somebody speak the report of God of your life. Erase everything else they said about you. Everything else they ever said of you or everything else that was ever written of you, it was erased by the testimony of Christ on the cross. It was erased. Praise Jesus. Somebody speak something deep. Hey, Sakata. Somebody speak something of depth. Praise the Lord. Speak something deeper. Oh, Shakata. Let me show you one more scripture and we finish. <laughs> oh, I feel God in this place. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. I don't know. Yes, let's start from there. The Bible says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, yet you love. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. The sign that you are believing, the sign that you carry the report of God is that you rejoice with joy unspeakable. They are saying this, but your heart is full of joy because you know what God told you. You know what God told you. You know what God fought for you those days. You know where God got you from. And so the reports of now and the reports of then, we cannot move you. They have nothing on you. Jesus looks at the disciples and he tells them, the devil has nothing on me. He has nothing on me. Nothing. 
The ability of anything to have power on you is when you decide it. You as yourself. And say from today, I'll just allow it to, I'll just allow. That is why even Jesus Christ on the cross, he allowed to be killed. Remember he said he could call the legion of angels and that page will just pass like pew. But because he was beholding the, the end of his death, he just allowed. He allowed it. So many things happen to us because we have allowed. Because we have responded and reported because of how we saw it. I saw it and I said, oh, it is this. But now for a problem of a Christian is that your mouth carries power. The Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is power. When you report it into the negative, it takes form into the negative. When you say, eh, I think I have cancer, cancer forms. Why? Because every word of yours is creation false. You are created. That's the only thing the devil clings on, nothing else. Waiting for what you will report. What will she report? What will she say? Okay, now she's in a hard place. What will she say? What you say, the devil is like, hmm. You are so deep, let me tell you. You are so deep in the word of God. The devil right now cannot make you fornicate. He can't lead you there. Because he knows your depth of word. He knows he can't make you steal. He knows he can't make you, he can't do. You are a new creature already. You are a new creature. You, 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 are, you are born of God. When he sees you, he sees God. The devil keeps his distance and only waits for the report. What will she say? That is why because we guard our hearts so seriously, every time we find ourselves in situations, we laugh about them. I said in this life, I will never use my mouth to report anything that is not in consonance to the word of God. I won't. That is why we don't speak some things. Yet sometimes we even feel the liberty too. Yet sometimes, according to carnality, they even look true. But truth is Jesus. The way Jesus named it is how I name it. Praise the Lord. The way Jesus said it is how I say it. You know, sometimes we get in situations and we start to complain. We are like, oh, Vanange, what am I going to do? Oh, Jesus, get me out of this. What am I going to do? Oh, God, what am I... When Jesus knew that his time of testing was meant to come, he said, from now on, I will not speak unto you. Why? He knew the depth of the words that were supposed to come out of his mouth. He went through the passion, not saying a word. When they were giving him and knocking him and, and scourging him, he would have said, mwe, 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 mwe. you don't know me. I, who is that? I can beat you up. When they were asking him, when they were blindfolding him and telling him, now speak. Who has blindfolded? You will have said, gwe, 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 gwe. I know you. He would have. But when he noticed the moment of the passion was coming, he told the disciples, from now on, I will not speak anymore. He said, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. No, no. Mm -mm. For the prince of, his, of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Why wasn't he talking? It was the moment for him to fellowship with what was in the heart. To fellowship with the heart issues. He knew. But most of the times when we are pressed, we, you, you, it's like you're always like, mm -hmm. you're just about to say. No, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Praise the Lord. Paul and Silas had an opportunity to complain because their feet were bound. Their hands were bound. They were put in the depths of the dungeon in prison. Guys, that is why a matter to complain and say, God, but we were doing your work. Now you see what you've done to us. And this is the God I've been telling you. This God has an issue every time you believe in him. They had an opportunity to talk and cry and wail about the situation. 
But the Bible says when they were there, the Bible says at the midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. They rejoiced. And to the prisoners heard them. Praise the Lord. When the situations were pressing in on them, for them they are there singing, Oh, kwa galako, kumpi tirideko. They are not there discussing on how they should come out. They knew coming out is obvious. Coming out is obvious depending on the setting of the heart. They knew it. They knew coming out is obvious depending on the setting of my heart. And though they were in the shambles, the Bible says they started to rejoice. The Bible says at the midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Uh -huh. Verse 26. And suddenly, suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Hey, Baragos, Kaya, There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Your refusal to bow to things causes their foundations to be shaken. Because you refuse to bow to cancer, the foundation of cancer was shaken. That is why if you will stay in the word believing, if you will stay in the word meditating and get the fruit of it, everywhere you go, cancer will be bowing because their foundation was shaken. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and suddenly there was an earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. Oh. But look at this. When the prison doors were open, they were not quick to write out and say, Mama, I'm born you. They didn't. Look at what the Bible says. And everyone's bands were loosed. Meaning, the thing you decide in your heart is not for yourself. It loses everyone, everyone. That word of God that you know in your heart and report about is for everyone. That is why the Bible says that these things, they are as a sound that have gone to the ends of the world. This sound of yours when you're waking up in the morning and saying, Oh God, I thank you, I am blessed. That is spirit. It is life. It is reported and recorded in generations ahead of you. Praise the Lord. It says, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went unto all the earth. And their words unto the ends of the world. When I'm there and I'm saying, I'm, I, I am the righteousness of God. Greater things are spoken about me. I am a well watered garden. Those things are going to the ends of the world. Deliverance is finding itself in the houses of men, in the prison doors. Deliverance is finding itself in every corner where prostitution is. That is why we talk the word and don't back up. Praise the Lord. The word is not restricted to your confines. When you're saying, I am blessed, it is not your you alone. There are people that are living in the inside of you that are hearing and they are saying, yes, we are blessed. Praise the Lord. When you're there and you're saying, I am anointed from my head to the soles of my feet. There are people hearing and they are saying, yes. That is why when you leave this place and when God has blessed you and has given you a ministry, when you go there, you find people of your own. The ones who believe like you believe. Why? We are not just crazy people. This is the product of who our father is. When he will lock himself in the bedroom, he will say, I am anointed. Reason why you are anointed. The word of God had to fetch you where you are and bring you here anointed. Praise the Lord. You don't come in Fanero to be anointed. You come because you are anointed. Praise the Lord. You don't come in Fanero to succeed. You come because you are a success. Why? Because someone in his closet, he was there saying, I'm a success. 
I am a success. Going out and coming in. I am the blessed of God. I am the righteousness of God. You came righteous. You came blessed. You came filled. You came everything. Praise the Lord. Let's go back. It says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. No, let's go to verse 27. It says, and the keeper of the prison, awaking out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing the prisoners had been, had, had been fled. Do you see how they are not even ready to run away? Because they know, even if you come and bind them again, there is a solution. The reporting. We know how to report. When things are binding us left, right, and center, we don't get crushed. We start saying, hey, glory to God. We start rejoicing. We know what makes the chains to break. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. We are not going anywhere. But that one was to tell them, even if you hold us back, we know what to do. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? The way you report a situation carries the salvation of many souls. You may never in this life get an opportunity to stand in a pulpit, but how you respond and report to a situation will set souls on fire. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that you are written epistles. That you are known and you are read of all men. That is a form of a reporting. That everywhere I go, even when people look at my photo, eh, 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 my photo is already reporting. Praise the Lord. Someone gave us a testimony in England and they said, when they saw the, the face of Apostle Grace on the poster, they just got healed. That is a man that is reporting. They know how to report. Praise the Lord. Because of the abundance of what is in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I don't give in easily. I am born of the word. I am born of God. I am a success. I overcome in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Or else Paul will have said that you are a conqueror. He will have called you a conqueror. And that will be good. It will be a form of a report. But when he went beyond, he looked at people and saw this. It's ugly people that conquer. The seed of God is more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. When they tell you things, you know you are more than a conqueror. Guys, what a blessing to carry that as a setting in you. As a setting in you. Because if it be a setting, then what remains is just meant to read you. When you pass, they are like, hey, but I've not seen this. Hey, but I've not seen this. They told us that there are some nations where the word of God cannot go. But when they get Bibles, they tear them into pieces and then they put you in prison. My God. We are the word. Because of what God is working in the inside of us, we are going to go to those nations. And as I'm passing like this, someone is like, hmm. You cannot put boundaries on the word of God. You cannot create limitations for the word of God. Praise the Lord. We are going to buy, I have meditated it, I'm going to do it. We are going to buy those dresses which are cut here like this. And we are going to be walking among them. The word of God shall be preached. Praise the Lord. 
While some people are busy claiming, God give me Canada, God give me Australia, God give me where. The, for us, there is where we are claiming. It is our territory. God said, ask of nations and I will give them to you as a gift. So when you, you are there and saying, I cannot go to there. There where bullets fly, mama, watch us. Bullets will be passing like this and the gospel is being preached. At ease. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I don't fail. I am full of the word. I am born of God. I know what to report. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. Everything about me is blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We know what to do. Hallelujah. We keep rejoicing. <laughs> we refuse to back down. Praise the Lord. We stay rejoicing. There is nothing that I love like I laugh a lot. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. So, one of those days, my mom comes and is like, but, but you, why do you always? Why are you always happy? You know, sometimes when you're always a happy person because of the abundance of the word, you start to bore people. But I know, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord that is a setting in the inside of you. That when men think it's time to cry for you, you're like, hey, I cry for what now? You cry for what? I have learned to just stay in the presence of God and cry there. But I'm, I'm, when I'm out there, don't expect me to cry anywhere else. Because we know how to fix it. Praise the Lord. They tell you your boyfriend chucked you and you cry. I cannot. The way you're seeing my eyes dry like this. My father preached one day and said that when one goes out, he's creating an opportunity for others. We don't cry about those things. My dear sister, stop weeping. Put on your garments of joy. Your garments and get the oil of gladness upon you and start to dance. For something is ahead of you. Praise the Lord. It is what you see. Praise the Lord. Say, I follow Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and let's speak in tongues in this place. Say, I follow Jesus. Because you know that you follow, speak something crazy about your life. Hey, Rapa Shetekina. Somebody open your mouth and say something crazy. Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. I am anointed, I'm anointed. Somebody say a word. Hey, somebody send forth the word to the ends of the world. Let your sound be heard today. Let the nation start to respond to you because of this sound this night. Hey, the word of God in my mouth is the sword. I am blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You cannot be disadvantaged. You cannot lack. The Bible says the Lord is your shepherd. You cannot lack. You cannot be in want. Hey, hey. Lord, you are our hiding place. You are our habitation, oh God. 
somebody say a word because of what you see. O kalabaka zeketele prekele bo shiarabaha. Let the word of God have its free course. Let pakashite kele prekele bo siere bo sha. Somebody pray in the word. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are increasing on every side. The Lord increases you on every side. You were born of God, nothing can fail you. You were the redeemed of God. Somebody start to report right now. Reports, reports, reports. Somebody pray in this place. The Bible says that God has exalted his word above his name. Keep talking the word. Somebody speak something about yourself. Open your mouth. Terrible things have been happening because you never said anything. Start to report. Look at that situation and start to report. Start to report. Start to report. My God, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The Lord is the glory of your life. Hey, the Lord is your salvation. We don't drop back to perdition. No, we don't because we are born of the word of God. Which is imperishable. I hear in the spirit that things are just vanishing. That things are just vanishing. Because the entrance of the word brings light. Every darkness flees right now. Somebody speak what Christ has wrought in the inside of you. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. I am a well watered garden. I am a tree that is planted by the waters. One more minute, one moment. One more minute. One more minute. I feel the fire of God in this place. The word of God in your mouth is God talking. Open your mouth and say something. For narrow we are moving upward and upward only. We are waxing great every other day. Greater and greater. Shaka 
You cannot be defeated. You cannot be disadvantaged. You cannot be overcome. Hey, hey. The greater one lives in the inside of you. My God, the greater one lives in the inside of you. You cannot be overcome. Hey, hey. Praise the Lord. I feel an anointing in this place. Somebody just lift your hands and receive. Oh, shut up. Somebody just lift your hands and receive. There are people here, nations have been calling your name. And tonight was that night that they respond. Your word has already gone to the ends of the world. Your word has already gone to the ends of the world. There is a response. There is a demand because of what you carry in your spirit. There is a demand because of what I hear voices of men and women crying. Praying and saying, God, send us people. God, send us. I hear nations wailing. They are seeking for this that you carry in the inside of them. Oh, that report that is in the inside of you is not yours. But for generations, God is anointing someone right now. <laughs> God is anointing you right now. Right now in Jesus' name. anointing settling upon us right now I receive it oh God God says you will always stay above you should stay in my word you will always stay above if you stay in my word there is an anointing in this place I see the faces of people radiating our glory <laughs> Radiating the glory of God. Radiating the glory of God. It shall be known of you everywhere you go. That you create a server of the knowledge of God in every place. Because you sat in a certain chair in a nation, that will be a blessing for them. Because you thought about them, that will be a blessing for them. Because you talked about them, that will be a blessing for them. Somebody receive it, receive it, receive it. Oh God, I receive it upon my life. Somebody just take a minute. God wants to love on us in this place. Jesus, we came here because we love you. Oh, Rabaka Sotaya Somebody receive it, receive it. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.